Can, 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 I, can I say something briefly in response yeah. before, before, before Evan tries to rip me to shreds? I just, I, I just want to get a bit of respite. Yeah. So, so I, I, I wanted to say that uh, briefly, and then just a couple of uh, words by way of elaboration, that I couldn't agree more with everything that you said. So I think it would be a good idea to reframe this in terms of a morality of aspiration. I do think that uh, one can get a lot more out of Kelson than I indicate uh, in this paper, and indeed one can get a kind of very healthy rapprochement between uh, Kelson and uh, Heller. And uh, if one is looking for uh, the person who developed the kind of theory which I th think uh, would come out of this rapprochement, I think the obvious uh, candidate uh, is uh, Fuller, who, who, by the way, is the only major legal theorist writing in English in the 20th century that I know of ever to uh, refer uh, to uh, Heller. And uh, the, so, but, but I didn't actually want to inject too much fuller talk uh, into this paper, but, I, but perhaps I, I need to do more in order to uh, do justice to the idea that I'm trying to develop. Okay, that's as much as I can say by way of holding Evan off, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll speak to your, uh, your gross mischaracterization of my use of the question to decide. But I, I really just have a question about uh, your characterization of Heller. Oh, sorry. I have a question about your characterization of Heller because it seems to me that you uh, perhaps attribute to him, if not an inconsistency, at least uh, a certain tension, which from what you say about him in the early stages, it's not clear that he would, uh, he would subscribe to. And I say this, of course, never having read any Heller. So it's really a question for clarification. But well, you, you distinguish on uh, page 13 before, between his substan uh, the substantive Rechstag, uh, the substance of the rule of law, and then this idea of the pure form of law. So the, the substantive idea of the rule of law is the idea derived from ethical fundamental principles, principles of legality, such as the idea of the equality of legal subjects. And that's supposed to be distinguished uh, uh, from the formal Rechstag, which will be in place wherever there is, quote, the pure form of law. But if the ethical sensibility is, a really, is actually a constitutive aspect of law and legal order, um, I guess the question that I have for you is, uh, at least according to Heller, is there really any such thing as a, a pure form of law, absent those? And if there isn't, um, uh, if, there isn't if there isn't such a thing, uh, uh, what sense does the substantive formal uh, distinction really make here? Right, so I'm going to have to look a bit more carefully at the way that I uh, described the position. So, so F H H Heller uh, thought that uh, Kelsen uh, made a mistake in trying to have a theory of law that was uh, pure. And he didn't think that there was such a thing as a pure theory of law. However, he did not think did not think that uh, Kelsen made a mistake in trying to understand uh, wh why it's important to understand uh, law's formal characteristics. But if one were going to take those formal characteristics seriously, Heller thought, one would have to see that those formal characteristics aren't, uh, if you like, uh, merely formal, but there are uh, substantive commitments that underpin those formal characteristics. So law is at the same time formal and uh, substantive, according to him. And uh, Kelsen's mistake was in not uh, seeing that uh, the formal commitments uh, travel with uh, substantive commitments, and we wouldn't be uh, at all, uh, uh, we wouldn't care about law if uh, that weren't uh, the case. And uh, I think, going back to your comment, that uh, Fuller had exactly the same position, so a neglected chapter of uh, the morality of law is the chapter where Fuller tries to work out what he regards as a substantive Im implications of uh, the fairly formal commitments, or they call them procedural commitments, that he sets out when he tells us the story of King Rex. Yeah. So the, 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 the story is that both formal and substantive. Yeah, so, I thought, so I thought that's what yeah. so the real contrast is between legal order and law and a coercive order, not a pure form of law. Right? Yeah. So I will ask. I have some. Ah, yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead and I'll ask. Okay. So, 
I thinking of two ways of uh, thinking about the contribution of Heller to the question of international law and in particular to the question of the obligation toward others. The first one will be that international law, like, uh, um, uh, li like uh, state law, will be a, a, a combination of uh, ethics and uh, the legal logic, and in a way that uh, uh, the international law will be a regime that uh, ensure the need for global popular sovereignty in a way and taking into account the claims and uh, values of individual and state, and in a manner that they all be the author of the uh, international law and the subject of it. And the other option is to stay inside the static paradigm and say that the ethic and the legal logic is, uh, contains inside them the uh, interest and value of, of other, of foreign people, and then uh, uh, the need also to be answerable to foreign claims and, and, and needs. And I wonder what do you think could be the contribution to this question, or those other options? Yeah, so, 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 so that's a, a very uh, helpful contrast, I think. And my, my uh, reaction to it, I have to think about more is that it's going to be much more uh, the second uh, than the first. So, so this takes me back uh, indirectly to uh, discussion in, in the last session about uh, legitimacy. And uh, perhaps, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether I understand your position uh, uh, altogether correctly on this, Sergio, but I, th I thought you were saying right at the end of your session that uh, if there isn't democracy, if, if the sovereign isn't democratic, then the sovereign isn't legitimate. Something like that, right? So maybe that's a little crude, but something like that. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Heller, and this is where he reached back to uh, people like Hobbes, and since Lorenzo uh, just put up his hand, uh, uh, Spinoza was also a very important source for uh, Heller in this regard. Uh, Heller thought that there was another kind of legitimacy, and that was, as, uh, as uh, Habermas termed it, but I don't think he was the first to think of this idea, the legitimacy of legality. Mm -hmm. so, so even when one has a, a non-democratic sovereign, given that it's a sovereign, and a sovereign is legally constituted, what does it mean to be legally constituted? Uh, there's a certain respect that the sovereign pays, uh, let's call it to his own positive law, as well as uh, the conditioning of the content of positive law by the principles of legality, that in itself creates a kind of uh, legitimacy that travels with legality. And then we have another source of legitimacy that we all think is necessary today, and that is uh, democratic legitimacy. But in the sovereign's relationship with people who are uh, not citizens, uh, the, when the sovereign acts legally in a legal mode towards those uh, non-citizens, makes them subject to the sovereign's power, the sovereign still has to act in such a way that uh, their respect is shown for the principles of legality and uh, so on. And, and so th this is, if you like, uh, the other regarding aspect of uh, the idea of sovereignty that I'm trying to develop uh, through Heller. And I find it uh, attractive in part because I think one can get there in a much more direct way without having to go through uh, the kind of Habermasian uh, machinery. One just works with uh, basic ideas about uh, the rule of law and how the rule of law structures the exercise of political power. Yeah. So, uh, at the, on, uh, if you can clarify what you think about the position of uh, Heller with respect to uh, this, the, the idea of uh, uh, legality or uh, legal government. So in your paper you say um, that uh, Heller thought that there was a choice that states had to and should make about whether to subject themselves to the international legal order. So first question is, if there's a choice, it means that they have a discretion. It's not an, and the question is whether there's more than a choice but an obligation. And then the second question is uh, your term international legal order and then later on you say ethical principles intrinsic to legal government. And so the question is whether there's a difference between uh, legal government in the domestic uh, settings 
and international legal order, or whether it's the same ethical principles that pervade both the domestic and the international. Right. So, so, so as you started to ask uh, your question, I started to regret having said <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that Heller thought there was a choice, because I, I too quickly uh, aligned him there with uh, Kelsen's position. So, so Kelsen, as I understand Kelsen, does say that there is a choice. And it's quite clear, as uh, you mentioned, that uh, which way uh, Kelsen thinks one should choose, but he doesn't think that uh, the way one should choose can be informed by legal science. This is a kind of ethical choice for Kelsen. So one should uh, give international law uh, priority, but that's a, a matter that the pure, th whether or not one does so, is not a matter to which the pure theory speaks. And I uh, suggested that the same was true of Heller. I don't think that is, can be correct. Why? Because uh, for, for Heller, uh, and, and this goes in part to the, the, the second part of your question, I think for Heller there's uh, legal order. And whether it's international legal order or domestic legal order, uh, there is going to be at least some significant commonality. I don't now want to venture how much because I've got to wade my way through these dense pages of international law, which I haven't done uh, properly yet. My German being too rusty to do so in a quick fashion, which is all I had available to me at the time I was writing the paper. And uh, so all there is is international is order. There's international legal order. There's domestic legal order. And uh, I think for Heller, the, the same principles will be constitutive of both kinds of legal order. So, so for him, perhaps there's no issue of choice at all. There is a kind of priority that uh, sovereignty has over uh, international organs. But, but that's, that's all that he wants to insist on. But for him, maybe in some way, but I try to suggest that it's in this kind of messy way that I mentioned at the beginning of uh, the uh, session, that there is just legal order. Yeah. Well, I, I find it fascinating uh, to learn more about the uh, Heller because indeed it's not so, so it, it itself. This was uh, re really a, a great uh, paper, uh, and uh, and I find this particularly interesting because uh, of the sort of uh, effort of uh, reconciling uh, contrasting positions or what uh, I call the, this conflict. Uh, However, I mean, whenever there is a conflict, jurisprudential conflict, sometimes uh, I, uh, I wonder what would happen uh, in extreme circumstances. Uh, you know, uh, when uh, you have, uh, well, you say that uh, uh, the concept of uh, sovereignty can be uh, seen as both ascending and descending. However, I mean, to use uh, Schmidt's uh, idea of exception, I mean, what happens uh, when uh, there is uh, a real extreme, exceptional circumstance? I mean. In which way can you reconcile uh, the respect for uh, a legal principle and so and uh, decisionism, or uh, can you really reconcile uh, uh, th these two sort of uh, 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 conflicting uh, elements, uh, or uh, is there a sort of a, well a presumptive priority between uh, you know a sort of a type of a decisionism that is the boundless uh, or a decision that is uh, bound by uh, the principles of legality? Or, or can you still say that there is still uh, a strive to balance the two or find a, a reconciliation? So, so, so I hope that the uh, is uh, in the long quotation on page four of my paper. So, so Heller s says within any domestic legal order, there's only one sovereign. That sovereign decides both in the normal and in the exceptional uh, situation. And uh, what uh, should make us trust uh, the sovereign to decide in the state of exception, even if the sovereign has to decide against the positive law, is that, that we know the sovereign will uh, try to uphold the Constitution and will try to act in accordance uh, with legality. And if one puts the point that way, then I think uh, the debate between uh, Schmittians and uh, let's call them legal constitutionalists like Heller becomes actually an empirical debate. So the, the question becomes w whether in ac actual situations of uh, emergency or exception that uh, different jurisdictions have encountered over time, one can show that there was always the possibility 
of deciding in a fashion that upheld legality rather than having to step outside of the law with some kind of extra legal unit which uh, uh, Schmidt thinks is a real sovereign having to make the decision. And uh, on the one hand, there is what one might call uh, faith or uh, aspiration, that actually if one tries hard enough, one will be able as a sovereign to decide in a way uh, that preserves uh, legality and constitutionalism. But on the other hand, it's not just faith, because if one does the empirical work, it actually turns out that the, I think, having done a fair amount of uh, investigation of my own in this kind of area, that the claims of those who take Schmidt seriously are often vastly uh, exaggerated. And usually there is a uh, solution that uh, does preserve uh, legality to some meaningful extent. And uh, this, you know, we, we, we're sitting uh, in Tel Aviv uh, talking about sovereignty. We, we hardly ever mention Israel. And uh, when Ayal and I were talking at dinner over uh, yesterday, we, we were talking about a very prominent uh, juridical figure in Israel, that is uh, uh, Haron Barak. And uh, there might be all sorts of uh, criticisms one can make of Barak, and perhaps many of his judgments backfired. This was the issue we were talking about last night. But Barak certainly believed that it was possible in any situation to find a uh, legal solution. And uh, if you talk to judges, uh, you usually find maybe they're completely naive about this, and maybe they do more harm than good, but this is something that we have to look at, that uh, we don't have to accept this kind of Schmittian view that there's this existential moment when uh, law retreats and somehow the state in some kind of extra legal guise uh, comes to the fore. Now we will collect some questions. Uh, we have Leora, Jean, and Sue. Uh, thank you, Thomas. So I think uh, my question, uh, uh, continued comment earlier, uh, question I wanted to ask uh, David, uh, how far uh, does legality lead you? Because you, uh, uh, you, you said that uh, when we think of, about the foreigner, we can think about uh, legality. So I wanted to ask, so what is the difference of the commitment uh, coming out of legality towards citizens and uh, towards outsiders? Uh, or is it, uh, 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 does it mean if it all comes from legality, instead of Habermasian or whatever uh, uh, way we go, does it mean that we have the same, uh, 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 that the sovereign ha has the same uh, uh, obligations towards both? Or is it just towards the outsider, legality gives us some minimum, and towards citizens there are other obligations, but they do not come from legality, but from other political uh, uh, justification. So I just wanted to make clear, because legality seems to, uh, flatten the difference yeah. of the obligations. So, so, oh, so you, want, you want to tell them more? Yeah, yeah. Just a few minutes. Well, this last question is sort of the underside of what I wanted to say. Um, I actually very much uh, appreciate uh, the distinction between uh, rule of law, the legitimacy inherent in law, rule of law, what, Kelsen, not Kelsen, um, Heller, which I'm not that familiar with, and Fuller. Um, not a, not a full-fledged natural law understanding of those. And democratic legitimacy. I think it's absolutely crucial to distinguish these between these and these are much too often collapsed. And I think it's crucial not to say that a, a state's legitimacy depends on being democratic. We know where that leads. Um, and it's empirically not true, and I think it's a bad idea. Not that I'm against democratic legitimacy. That's not my point. But... Um, uh, so I, I would see, it would seem to me that the distinction in terms of uh, um, uh, orientation towards citizens and insiders would, at least in a democratic state, involve uh, this extra of democratic legitimacy. But my question was slightly different, and that is, I, I didn't get to read the, the paper, um, but, but I will read, uh, read it, but um, uh, with the sovereignty idea, now it seems that obviously that what you're trying to say is that the, the sovereignty idea is to protect the rule of law against positive law and anything else that might, that might uh, turn up um, that would be um, negative to, towards the rule of law. But it do, does, does uh, Heller still involve, is there still a personalistic conception of this? In other words, who would be, well, <laughs> the defender of, the, of, of uh, um, the rule of law, not simply the Constitution, does it, can it be um, 
it must it be personalized? Can it be uh, Papua Sovereign, some other groups? I mean, that's, that's the question. Who actually can play that role um, uh, legitimately uh, or well, quasi-legally? That's the question. Just last question, Susan. Uh, here. I'll try to be short. Uh, my question is about the distinction between uh, ethical uh, law and logical law, and if there is a possibility that we can see how is how could this work in international law, because they both both uh, raise different uh, challenges for international law, while logical law is the universal. Uh, the what you what it's called ethical law is cultural. So you have to go in a different way if you want to apply these to international law. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so far, I, I start with the, the last question. Uh, this is something I, I have to think about more, but uh, it's clear that for Heller, uh, the ethical is somehow, but not infused by local culture, but it's not uh, totally constituted by local culture. So how that might work in international law is something I hadn't thought about till you asked your question. So I haven't got an answer for you uh, yet, I'm afraid. Uh, when it comes to uh, sovereignty and, and Jean's uh, question, I, I, th I think for Heller, uh, sovereignty is uh, entirely impersonal. So it's institutions that wield uh, uh, sovereign power. And I don't think he thinks that uh, there has, it has to be just one institution. So it was not like the Reich's president was the only uh, sovereign. The courts were sovereign. Administrative officials were sovereign. There just had to be some institution capable of taking a final decision on uh, any matter within a legal order. Uh, and then f finally with uh, Leora, so, if, so citizens' obligations definitely don't just come from uh, legality. They come from various uh, uh, sources. But when it comes to the outside, I think Keller probably, if one can understand his theory as telling one something about uh, international law as uh, being some kind of trustee for humanity, it's going to be uh, something much more limited, perhaps, than I think uh, what uh, Eyal uh, aspires to. So it's going to be much more issues like the issue that uh, Evan raised yesterday about the person at your border. What is your state's obligations to that person? Or if you send uh, troops to uh, fight in Iraq, an issue that arose in the United Kingdom, given that these troops should be seen as part of your state apparatus, what is your obligation to uh, the uh, Iraqis? Well, what is the state's obligation to the Iraqis? I don't, I don't think it's going to reach issues like uh, redistribution of wealth and uh, environmental uh, problems. Although, in the same way as I think that for Heller, the mere the commitment to formal equality raises issues about substantive equality that have to be answered in any uh, legal order if it's going to be the case that one can main Maintain, if one, that one can maintain respect for formal equality, so there might be some kind of drivers within the commitment to uh, legality that require us to ask questions about the issues that you uh, want to include, but without in any way trying to suggest uh, answers to those questions. Thank you.